Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here, August 20th, Sunday afternoon, early. We are going to be heading out to go visit a historic Civil War hospital near the Battle of Antietam battlefield. That is in Sharpsburg, Maryland. It's almost at the West Virginia border. But before I do that, such a nice day out. That's why we want to take the uh, opportunity to do that. And it happens to be open today. Anyway. As you can see, I have been testing some sprays, protectant sprays for prints. These are the cheap Krylon brand. You find these at most art stores. They're meant for protecting pencil drawings, charcoal drawings, maybe watercolor paintings done on real watercolor paper, not paper intended for inkjet. However, I have used it for such types of papers and it seems to perform okay. The nozzles leave a lot to be desired. Um, they really do not spray a very even coat of the material. And if you do not keep them nice and clean, they get all crusty and you know covered with residue from the spray. So you have to be very careful. So recently I bought supposedly real protecting spray Desert Varnish, I forgot to give the name for all of you that asked, Desert Varnish from Moab. And this appears to be a glossy type finish. This is matte, by the way, and this is glossy. And this stuff from Krylon comes in in two varieties. The solvent-based one, which you can probably use outside, recommended that you do so, and will likely dry a lot faster than the water-based low-odor stuff that I have here, which I prefer to use in a uh, special area in my shop where it will not bother any of the surroundings. But anyway, this takes a lot longer to dry and is very good for that technique that I use where I use just simple Canson watercolor paper and I print on it with pigment inks and then I apply a coat of either the matte or the glossy, depending on the effect that I want to achieve. If I want the watercolor paper to kind of look like it's got it's the tiniest amount of a, of a sheen or gloss, I'll use the glossy. And that actually enhances the lower DMAX that these papers produce when used on inkjet printers because they're not intended for that. But anyway, so a good friend and viewer asked me some questions, gave me some information as well. Joe, I've tested all three of the main sprays, Moab, Hannah Mule, and Premier Art, on both matte and glossy papers and canvases. My experience was that Moab put out a lot more spray than either Hannah Mule or Premier Art, and also took much longer to dry and left a slight tacky feel to the print. Both Moab and Hannah Mule left the print essentially unchanged, but Premier Art made it a slightly darker. Noticeably increased the D-Max and also increased color saturation. All three increased the abrasion resistance of the print and if put on heavy enough made the print virtually waterproof. My conclusions were that I did not care for the Moab because of the high volume of spray that went everywhere not for the extended drying time or the tacky feel even after it had dried. The Hannah Mule is great for its low spray volume and milder odor and is what I use when I want a print left unchanged. But because of the look and nature of my work, I prefer the increased DMAX and color saturation of the Premier Art for the vast majority. I just have to print slightly lighter or make a new profile. It's also nice that it is the least expensive. They are all expensive. Of the three, if you buy it in bulk at IT Supplies, I've also tested Clearjet spray many years ago, but quit using it as the nozzle had a tendency to spit the occasional glob of varnish onto my print, leaving little glossy spots on it. I really need to look to see what Clearjet is. I have not heard of it, but then again, I don't know a lot about these types of sprays. Um, Everything is great. Great information. Thank you, Mike. Um, I will look into these other brands and possibly order some. 
and we'll do a lot of testing. I don't know a lot about this stuff, so I will be also learning as I go along. Now, as far as the one that actually darkens your prints, you would have to create a profile and spray those charts with the same spray. I actually touched on that a long time ago. A viewer had been getting uh, results that actually turned the print slightly yellowish after the application of the varnish. And so he ended up having to apply the varnish onto the charts, wait for it to dry, scan them, and produce a profile that took into effect the yellowing action of that particular spray. You might want to do that with that. And if I do get some of that spray, I'll go ahead and create some profiles for some common papers for Canon and say Epson, for instance. So that is great information. So my plan is to go ahead and hit those three companies once again. I'm going to check to see if Moab has a uh, matching type of uh, spray for matte material. I'll go ahead and order that and also get some Hannah Mule and some uh, Premier Art. I guess, um, does Breathing Color have a spray as well? I'm not that sure. I'm going to go look and see. And maybe we'll get four types of spray and run a whole myriad of tests. It's going to be a little bit of uh, a difficult process to show on video, but at least I can give you my visual opinion as to what the results look like and also how mechanically these bottles or these uh, cans of uh, spray work. Again, the application or smoothness has to do with the nozzle. And so if you have a crappy little cheap nozzle like these do, maybe that has to do with the fact that some of these uh, sprays tend to spit instead of spray and even coating. Of course, the best way to do it is with an airbrush, I suppose, but that is way too much work. You would need a nice little spray booth in an area dedicated just for that. So we'll leave that at this point at a standstill until I go ahead and research some more on some of these types of spray and place an order to bring in a few of these uh, samples of varnishes and print protectants. It's all about protecting your prints. It's all about enhancing the longevity of your inks, specifically if you are using third-party inks. All right, so that is the reason for this. Not so much because I want to enhance OEM inks longevity even longer. No, 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 no. It's to be able to use the lower cost but great performing third-party inks that are available and enhance their longevity by simply applying one of these types of spray, especially if you choose not to protect your prints under glass or store them in an album or in boxes like I do. All right. Thank you so much for everything you guys have done for this channel. The views are going up, and so that means more views, more income, and more ability to buy new products and test them out for you guys to know what to buy and what not to buy. So thank you again. Please subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye. You see what I have right here? That's coming up next. Stay tuned.